This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good morning and aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I am usually the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. I still am the host of that show, but today we're going to do a little bit different, a special program. Uh, this is a special Think Tech Hawaii program, and it's titled Remembering Queen Kapiolani. And my guest is Colette Higgins. Uh, our story is about how the Queen went on a long journey across the sea. And Colette Higgins, who is the Dean of Academic Affairs at Windward Community College, followed that trip. In 1887, Queen Kapiolani undertook a journey from Hawaii to London and back. Dean Higgins traced that journey in her blog, In the Footsteps of Kapiolani, uh, and we'll give you that link at sometime during the show. And Dean Higgins has been a frequent speaker on the life and legacy of Queen Kapiolani. And today we're going to discuss why the Queen went, why she undertook that strenuous trip, where she went, what she saw, who she met, and what we should take from that trip, from Queen Kapiolani's travels, life, and personality. So first, Dean, welcome. Aloha. Thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, nice to have you. And may I call you Co Colette? Colette, that's Colette? fine. Okay. Yes. Uh, Colette, mm. Queen Kapiolani. Yes. Who, who, was, who was Queen Kapiolani, first of all, before oh. we get into her, her Sure. <laughs> so her claim to fame is that she's married to King David Kalakaua. So he becomes king in 1874, but they had gotten married in 1863. So she marries him before he becomes king. And he reigns as king until 1891. And so um, she's queen, basically, queen consort for 17 years, his whole reign, yeah? Mm. So, um, and I think of, when I think of Kapi'olani, most people, when I ask them, what do you know about Queen Kapi'olani, they'll say, they'll name the boulevard, they'll name the park, the hospital, the college, mm -hmm. um, and then the clever ones who know a little bit of Hawaiian history will, will remember that she was married to Kalakaua and that she lived at Iolani Palace, but really they don't know much about and, her. And, and your blog, yeah. which I read, mm -hmm. which I really enjoyed, oh, thank uh, you. Uh, you call her a forgotten queen, and that's, yeah. and that's what you're, th that's what you're right. thinking. Uh, right, because even in Hawaii, when I ask people, what do you know about Queen Kapi'olani, that they'll name me those, those places named after yeah. her, but they really don't know much about her. So they don't know, for example, that she had two charities that she was really concerned about, right? Um, the people with leprosy, uh, who had been sent to Kalaupapa, and also uh, the, the hospital. She established the Kapi'olani Maternity Home, or mm -hmm. the, what's the wow. hospital today, right? Um, and that They're truly is her legacy. Today. Right, I mean, right. Those, those, I was those born are there. things. <laughs> yeah. our, our son was born there. Right, yeah. My, my yeah. dad Lots was a, the doctor there for right. a while. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, so a lot of Hawaii people have connections to Kapi'olani Hospital, but we don't know much about the queen who established that hospital and why she may have established that hospital. I have a couple of ideas of why I think she established the hospital. Uh, one is, I think, um, when she was married to her first husband, Bennett Namakeha, she had a stillborn child. Mm. Um, and so she understands the grief of having lost a child. Yeah. And then when she was on this journey in 1887, she saw a hospital in New York, a charity hospital, a maternity ward that was all modern with the modern uh, sanitation and, and whatnot. And I think that inspired her to come back and open the hospital in 1890. Okay, yeah. 1887. Yes. All right, 1887. <laughs> What happened? I mean, how, what was all, why was she going on this trip? What, oh, what was well, that about? <laughs> 1887, uh, Queen Victoria, uh, Queen of England, uh, she's celebrating 50 years on the throne in 1887. And so they, you know, all the monarchs around the world know about this and that she's going to celebrate this in June. Uh, there's going to be a big ceremony at Westminster Abbey in June. And so our kingdom sends... Uh, so a representative there. There was, right. a, I guess, a, they sent an invitation or something. Well, there. actually, no. I tried right. investigating this. There's a book about this that was published in 1975, A Royal Journey by Emily mm. Warner. And she she actually had done the footwork trying to figure out where the invitations were. There were no actual invitations sent. It was just one of those things the royals knew. Everyone, uh, the royalty knew that this big event was happening. So it, was, it wasn't an official invitation uh, that was sent out. But oh. yeah, so if you wanted to send someone to represent your kingdom, then that was the place to be in 1887 in June. In June right. of 1887, mm -hmm. 50 years on the floor right, for right. Queen Victoria. Right, Queen Victoria. And mm -hmm. they decide to send mm -hmm. the Queen Consort, the Queen 
He was right. married to King Kalakaua. Now he, he'd been around the world. Yes, a few in, years 18, before that. in 1881, he had met Queen Victoria in 1881 on his world tour. So he was gone about 10 months when he did his world tour. Um, and he had met Queen Victoria on that tour. And so he had already been, and so he, he thought he'd send his wife instead. And then he asked uh, Princess Liliokalani to join her because Kapi'olani didn't speak any English, right? She knew and understood some, but she was not fluent in English. So she needed others traveling with her to interpret for her. Uh, to me, it's so interesting mm -hmm. that King Kalakaua then would send the queen on this, this right. long, in those days, it, it's a long journey today, right. mm -hmm. but a long journey then. Now, mm -hmm. now, all right, who else was who else was along? So the entourage was nine people in the traveling party. So it's Kapi'olani, she's the named person. Then it's Princess Liliokalani, her husband, John Owen Dominus. Then there's um, other dignitaries, courtesy Aokea. He's like the diplomat. Uh, he has this long title, but he's the diplomat traveling. Um, and then we have uh, James Boyd. He would later marry um, Helen... Uh, um, Cleghorn, so the, the sister of Princess Iolani, but he was actually, uh, James Boyd traveled as the aide-de-camp, yeah, mm -hmm. and then they had four servants, so one lady's maid, Susan Ho'okano, and then there's um, Maguire, James Maguire, who kept a diary that was very helpful for me in the research, um, and then he was in charge of all the luggage, lots of luggage, just 55 bags of luggage, right, and then, and then two guys that I think was the muscle, the guards, uh, Joe Aya and Charles Kayaike. Um, and so um, there's some descriptions of how they served as guard a couple of times, you know, so uh, I've only seen one picture of them. It doesn't have everybody in the traveling party, but I think there's a picture of either Joe or Charles and some others on a, a, the boat that transported them from the ship to San Francisco. So you take the big ship to San Francisco and then a little boat to get to, to shore, right? And there's a picture that was taken on that mm. little boat. That's the only picture I've seen of the traveling party. It's we not have, complete. We have mm -hmm. some photos of Queen mm -hmm. Kapiolani. Sure. Uh, that, that's her traveling. Uh, yeah, that's outfit, her traveling right? clothes, us, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's look at that. I mean, well, when you think about it, Victorian era, you know, that's what women wore. That's her casual outfits compared to her sophisticated, you know, ball gowns and whatnot. That's her traveling outfits. I don't think I do very well in Victorian <laughs> England. <laughs> I like my pants and okay. my right. blouses. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's, and that's one of her nice, beautiful gowns. So she had beautiful gowns that she wore on this journey. Um, she was representing Hawaii, and so the gowns that she wore represented Hawaii in a very unique way. And so it was kind of the talk of the town, um, whether it was in D.C. or in, uh, in London, um, very unique. So this one is her feathered uh, gowns. You can see the feathered pattern, right? right. Okay, mm -hmm. and, then, and so she, she took off from mm -hmm. Hawaii. Where, right. where, where did she go? So the journey starts from Honolulu to San Francisco. So you okay. have to take a ship to San Francisco. It takes about a week. Um, and then from San Francisco, she took a train across the continent. And so she changed trains in Chicago, stayed there only maybe two hours waiting for the next train, um, and then to D.C. And then after D.C., so San Francisco was about a week, and D.C. about a week, and then up to Boston, um, and then that, that for about a week, and then from Boston to New York, and then from New York, yeah. Okay, all right, <laughs> so, so all over, uh, yeah. On, uh, when she was in the United States. Right. Okay. San Francisco, right. I guess all the ships went to San yes, Francisco. Yes, that's correct. Right. So if you wanted to get to the continental U.S., yeah, the, the ship route was Honolulu to San Francisco. They did a, a lot of that run. So that's the first place you'd have to stop. So and it's a nice place traveling. to go. Yes, and a nice place to go. To like right. it. Sure, and, sure. And so... Uh, and what, what did she do in San, San Francisco? Well, in San Francisco, she stayed at the Palace Hotel, um, and she did. She played tourists a little bit. So she went to the Old Mint. Now, Kalakaua had his coins minted there in 1883. Mm -hmm. So these Kalakaua coins that were minted there um, was same, uh, same like the American coins. So the, the dollar, the half dollar, the quarter, the dime um, was minted there at the Old Mint in San Francisco. So it was still an operating mint when she went to visit. So his coins were minted in 83. In 1883, she's visiting in 87. So she tours the Old Mint, right? And McGuire writes about it in his diary. He, she tours the Old Mint. And we were, when I went on, on my journey, I'm retracing her footsteps, trying to go in every room that she went in and reading the description that McGuire had, um, and she wanted to see how the coins were made. That you know, And so she visits the old mint, and I think it was uh, John Owen Dominus, he writes back in a letter home, he writes that uh, the queen and the princess are enjoying themselves in San Francisco, they're now at the old mints, or something like that. So they were touring the, the old mint to see where our Hawaiian coins had been made. So she was very curious about a lot of different things. So this trip was like an educational experience for her. She had heard about all these places, San Francisco, Boston, New York, London. She had never been. Her husband went in 81, right? But she'd never been to these places. Uh, her only trip prior to this journey was to the Marquesas Islands, uh, when she was married to her first husband, so it would be the 1850s. Um, but otherwise, it's just around these islands. So this is a big journey for her. She had never been to the U.S. She had never been 
uh, abroad. She had never been to, to London. So I think this is an educational so experience. She's learning yeah. and taking things in. Right. And there was mm -hmm. also some other uh, royalty in San, around San Francisco area. Yeah. Oh, right, her, her three nephews. So she had sent the three nephews there. So Kalakau had, had established a study abroad program. He said, sent 18 young scholars out there wow. to study in like six different countries. And so the three nephews were in California, in San Mateo. Um, and they were studying at the St. Matthew's that's Military the, Academy. We, I think we have a photo. Right, of there they are. Yeah. So um, on the left there, that's... Good looking guys. Yeah, Jonah Kuhio, Kalaniani Ole is standing on the left. I seated is Kawananakoa, David Kawananakoa, and to the right is Edward Kaley Yahonui. These are her three nephews, the sister, her sister Kekalike's sons. Kekalike passed away in 84, mm. so Kalakaua and Kapi'olani became the guardians of these three. So they send them to school at uh, St. Matthew's there in San Mateo, California. The year abroad program. King Kalakaua, yeah. pretty forward Yes, thinker, he was. You know? He thought if they go out and they study and, um, and uh, uh, away, then they can come back and they can work for the kingdom and they'll gain that extra knowledge. And they did something for California, right? Sure, what, right. What, so what, 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 they what introduced they surfing. <laughs> so it was the these three nephews who introduced surfing at Santa Cruz there in California because huh. they would they were in Santa, San Mateo for school but every summer they'd go to San, Santa Cruz and so in Santa Cruz they as where they actually introduced surfing they um they had made these redwood uh, surfboards really big long surfboards from California yeah, California redwood <laughs> and they went down to there's a river there in San Francisco and they were actually surfing the waves near the river yeah um, and so that's where surfing started yeah there's a plaque so at um, Santa Cruz um, the Surfing Museum there in Santa Cruz, I was able to visit that on my way back home, and there's a plaque that's established commemorating that in 1885 it was these three Hawaiian princes that introduced surfing there in California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you, you've, you've talked a little bit, you, you retraced the steps, right? I you, surely you, did. You went yeah. on this tour. I did. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and your tour was the same as the Queen? Sure, or? right. So the Queen, actually, she was gone for 106 days, I was gone for 56 days. Um, so I retraced it as best I could. So I took a plane to San Francisco because there's no ship that'll take you there today. I did take a train across the continent though. Um, and then uh, I stood overnight in Chicago um, and then all the way to DC and then we took trains from you know, uh, DC to Boston and then to New York and then a ship across the Atlantic because I had to do one leg of the journey by ship because that's the way she traveled mm, to get to yeah. San Francisco and then to and from uh, England, right? So I'd never been on a ship before. I'd never been on a train before. So this was a big adventure for me as well. 56 days on the road, wow. my husband and I. Wow. So only an entourage of two, just me and my <laughs> husband compared to nine yeah, of the nobody, Queen's traveling how party. How many bags did you have? Oh, we only had four bags, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was we, my husband and I each had a rolling carry-on and a backpack. That's it. Yeah. Because we knew we'd go, we were traveling by train, by ship, by, we'd have to be able to carry um, on subways as we're going around so we weren't traveling like royalty in the sense that we don't have a large entourage and people meeting us everywhere um, so we just had to go with what we could manage <laughs> just the four okay yeah. all right so uh, you you decided to follow this uh, route mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the Queen had taken and uh, we've gotten to San Francisco right and then she went to Across the uh, DC, continent. right across the continent. It took her about a week to get across the continent by train. She had a Pullman car, one of those private Pullman cars back in the day. Um, so we we took the Amtrak and we went across. Um, and she by train. It took us three days, right? So I got to see snow in the Sierra Nevadas because we took the California Zephyr, and she had done. She had seen snow in California um, because it was April, right? And I was wondering when I was reading about it in the diaries, you know, and Lilia Kalani, and she writes about it in her book uh, about how the guys had gotten out of the train at one point and having a snowball fight. And I, I was thinking, April, you know, they got snow. Where's that? And it's up in the Sierra Nevadas, right? So I got to see this falling snow mm. with these Christmas trees. Uh, it seemed, you know, up in the Sierra Nevadas and then the Rocky Mountains and it's, and then I, of course you get to Nebraska and other that it's more flat not as much to see but it's just beautiful terrain it's a wonderful way to travel she had no choice she had to do it that way right. but I chose to retrace those footsteps to try nice. to see the same scenery around the same time of year that she mm -hmm. saw it right mm -hmm. and I saw all that snow and I, I, I and understood you really that. felt the same feeling right yeah. right it's a wonderful way to travel by train in modern times right unlike planes well, right? <laughs> yeah. we're gonna yeah. take the next mm -hmm. step mm -hmm. After sure. our break. Okay, sure. And we'll take a break and come back. Okay? Sure, all right. Okay. <laughs> Going to the game and it's gonna be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today because I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line, keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you wanna be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says, Let's go.
guys. It's RV Kelly. I'm your host of Out of the Comfort Zone, where I find cool people with cool solutions to problems that all of us face. Now, the thing is, we're really cool. And I only invite really cool people. But the thing is, I think you're kind of cool, too. So I think you should come and watch. That Thursdays at 11 AM here on OC16 Television with Think Tech Hawaii. I'm RV Kelly, host of Out of the Comfort Zone, and I will see you next Thursday. We are back remembering Queen Kapiolani and her trip to London uh, to see Queen Victoria. And I'm with Colette Higgins, who's the dean at uh, Windward Community College. And we have gotten as far <laughs> as the United States. <laughs> and now I'm going to ask her to briefly tell me uh -huh. what happened with the Queen uh -huh. uh, and her entourage right. in the United States. And then let's get to London. OK, sure. So um, one of the things that happened was when she was pulling, uh, going across the continent, she pulled into Salt Lake City, Utah. And there were about 20 Hawaiians living there already, some Mormons yeah, who were living there. And so they get on the train, and they're bowing to the Queen, and they're crying, and they're having this conversation. So they showed a lot of respect to the Queen. Um, as she gets to uh, D.C., she has, of course, the state dinner with uh, President Grover Cleveland in honor of her, wow. right? So the Queen and the Princess attended that dinner. She met with the, uh, the President of the United States. And then when she was in Boston, there's a big, um, uh, big reception, about 10,000 people that show up at the Mechanics Hall to get a glimpse of the, the Queen and the Princess from Hawaii. They even played Hawaii, uh, no, Aloha Oi, there at this big which reception. The queen wrote. Yeah, with the, which the Princess wrote. The princess yeah, wrote, yeah the Princess Lily of Kalani at that time, right? And so she wrote it. And then in New York, they're they playing tourists in New York, but they also had visited hospitals and schools and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, along the way, she's meet, going to actually a lot of women's colleges. She's very interested in women's colleges and education, it seems. So she, mm -hmm. she, she's learning. This is a learning Yes, it's a learning for experience okay. for her, very much so. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, and then uh, she needs to get to uh, <laughs> the, right. the main reason for her trip. That's so, correct. So right. what, what happens next? So she has to get on a ship in New York. And in those days, it was a New York to Liverpool run for the ship. So she pulls into Liverpool. It takes about nine days. So my journey, we also did nine days across uh, the Atlantic on the Queen Mary II. And how was the travel oh, that in, those was, it's, in those days? In those days, it's actually one of those ships that was both uh, sails and steam. So uh -huh. it could go either way. So you can make it to your destination on time. And it was a nice, luxurious ship for her in those days as well. So that was her relax, right? So when you get on the ship, you can relax. Um, because it's going to be busy, busy, busy once she gets off that ship okay, in Liverpool. So what happened? Yeah. In Liverpool, it's her first stop. And as they roll out the red carpet, the Queen Victoria had sent these military guards there. And it was uh, the crowd uh, shows up. And she's very much treated like royalty. She's a guest of Queen Victoria, right? So they're treating her with great honor and respect in Liverpool, right? And then from Liverpool, she goes on to Norwich. Norwich. Norwich, Tell yeah. Tell me about so that. Uh, Norwich is actually that, a small... That was kind of interesting to yeah, me. Yeah, you know? to me it was my favorite place out of this whole journey. It's a small little southeastern town uh, in England. Mm -hmm. It's famous for Coleman and Mustard. So if you buy your Coleman yeah, oh, yeah, Mustard, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. it's from Norwich. And so um, there it was quite famous in the Middle Ages as a, as a travel uh, a, a trade town, right? Um, they have all of these broads and waterways that they have. And so in Norwich, she actually toured the whole city. She had lunch with the mayor, all of this. And then she goes to and she sees a tower. They take her to a tower uh, just outside of Norwich, and there's a tower about four stories high. They had these um, garden towers. It, there's no purpose to them. <laughs> it's just a tower. It's, it's and a so, view or something? It's a view. And so she basically, she, uh, she actually, after two hours of listening to music there in Norwich, she climbs the tower. She actually, in her Victorian gown, oh you imagine her, in her, her travel outfit, going up this narrow spiral staircase. Yeah, uh, She gets to the top, and she's waving to the people down below with her fan. Uh, and she seems to be enjoying herself, right? So today in Norwich, when we went there, yeah. there's that tower still there. And they won't tear it down because there's a plaque on that tower. And, I, um, and the plaque says, uh, Queen Kapi'olani, or HM, Her Majesty Queen Kapi'olani, ascended this tower 6 June 1887. Before I left on my journey, someone at KCC, at Kapi'olani Community College, had asked me, are you going to see anything on this journey that's going to prove that our queen was there? And, and there it is in Norwich, England, a small little town in England. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and you can still tower. see it today. You can today. still see it and, today, so I visited it. I was and so you saw it thrilled. Your, and how did you feel when you saw that? Oh, it was so thrilling to be able to see it um, uh, up close and personal, right? Um, and so the people, the press came out to meet me. And it was a rainy day. It was a worse weather day out of our whole trip. But it was my favorite day because of the things we got to see that particular day. So Norwich. Um, and then after. After, Nor after uh, the tower, then we went to Rack 
Rakit Hall. And Rakit Hall is where the Queen had stayed um, when she was uh, oh. visiting Norwich before she went into London. And there she planted a tree, and I think I found the tree that she planted there. Oh. And the people who were showing us Rakit Hall didn't even know that Queen Kapi Olani and Princess Lilio Kalani had actually stayed there. So this was a historic preservation officer who has had got me access to the private tower, you know, yeah. uh, there in Norwich, and then also um, this Rakit Hall. And she didn't know that our queen had stayed there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so all, all these yeah. things happened uh, over 100 years ago. Right, about 130. And now they're, they're yeah. still there. They're still there. I mean, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So let's get to London. <laughs> London, what, right. What, London. What happens in London? How is she uh, received? How is she treated? What, oh, she's treated what, with what great respect. You know? no, all <laughs> kinds of fine gowns, right? So imagine you've got about a week worth of all of these balls and receptions, so you can't really wear the same outfit uh, twice, right? So the Queen and the Princess are invited to many different events there in London, uh, including many balls. Receptions with the Queen, of course. She meets with Queen Victoria, a private reception of about 15 minutes. They meet with her. Curtis Yakea is translating. Um, and of course, the main event is on the 21st of June. That's the big Thanksgiving ceremony at Westminster Abbey, right? And so they're there for that. Um, of course, when she's there, there's a, um, she, she has her photo taken with the very the peacock gown, the beautiful peacock gown. Uh, yeah, I think we have a, right, you have a, a photo of the photo peacock of, gown. Of the peacock right, gown, yeah. so there's her peacock gown, right? And I think she wore it to the reception on that very day, June 21st. First, there was a, a ball or, or, uh, in the evening at Buckingham Palace, so that would have been her outfit on that particular and, and, day. And the princess, the is princess Lilia Kalani is standing next to her um, as well, right? So on this journey, it was, uh, she wasn't queen. Uh, Lilia Kalani was a princess at that time, right. right? So the same photographer, Queen Victoria's photographer, took this picture of our queen and our princess. Yeah. And 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 mm -hmm. I, I get. I mean, it's kind of amazing. You know, here <laughs> they are in London, right? Right. We're in London at the Queen Victoria's uh, photographer's studio, taking this picture. Um, of this peacock gown. It's a beautiful gown. So it's very different from what other people are wearing. It, it really has some Hawaiian flair to it. So she's wearing Victorian outfits, right? Mm -hmm. Victorian style of gowns, but it has a Hawaiian flair, right? And so that peacock gown was quite uh, famous. It was actually made in New York at a store in New York where she had it fitted and whatnot. And I believe it was Maguire who designed it and probably collected the peacock feathers for that gown. The peacock, were they collected here? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, here in I Hawaii? Think so. I think so. Um, because they say that uh, Maguire designed the gown, but the actual gown was made in New York, yeah. Um, they was actually made in New York. And, and I, I understand the gown was kind of the talk of the town. Is that, right, and yeah. her outfits were very different, right? And so there's another yeah. one that she wears, and it's on exhibit at Iolani Palace. It's uh, the replica. It's uh, yellow feathers, and there's a yellow, uh, gown oh, yeah. with all these yellow yeah. feathers on it. It's quite beautiful. So her gowns had a Hawaiian flair to it, yeah? And so she's representing our kingdom quite well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And so they, they had a good time. Yeah, they right. Well, they well received. Well, right? Queen Victoria gave oh, them right. respect. So, right. So one reception on uh, the Queen Victoria was sitting in the middle and one side of her was Queen Kapi'olani and the other side of her was the Queen of the Belgians and that was the receiving line and the reception line was coming to meet the three queens. Wow. There. And then at another reception it was the, the future King of England. Um, it was, he was Prince of Wales at the time that would be the escort for Kapi'olani into the reception. Amazing. Right? And then the second son of Queen Victoria would be the escort for Princess Lily of Kalani. So you can see that Queen Victoria was definitely honoring Queen Kapi'olani when she visited. Um, the horse the drawn carriage that they sent to take them to Westminster Abbey was the same kind of carriage that Victoria had, just different color horses. So she, Victoria was really um, paying, uh, being very respectful of our Queen Kapi'olani. And the place she's given to, to you know, her seat at Westminster Abbey is actually, when I was there standing at Westminster Abbey, I saved that for the very last uh, day. Our very last stop was Westminster Abbey, because that's the scene of this big event, right? Normally you would see like 2,000 people in Westminster Abbey. That day they had 10,000 people. Mm. They had made all of these wooden bleachers and people were sitting all up uh, up and high, right? Th those were the invited guests. Right the, yeah, so our <laughs> queen was given a seat right up at front, you know, near the altar area. And so when I stood there and I looked at it, I, it was like five steps away from where Queen Victoria was seated. So it was a place of honor. It was like the best seat in the house, right? Mm. And so if you were to look at modern day photos of like William, um, William and Kate when they got married at Westminster right, Abbey, yeah, yeah. where they're seated right there, yeah. that that's where our queen was uh, standing. So she was given a place of honor. Queen Victoria really did honor our king, our queen and our princess from these small islands in the Pacific. Yeah, yeah. 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 There was something going on there. There was right, something. Right. And and you know, all right, Queen Queen Kapiolani. What what did, what did this 
What have you learned? What did, what did this I trip think I, I learned she was, to? oh my gosh, I, didn't, I don't have the kind of stamina that she has. She <laughs> was so busy, morning, afternoon, evening, and balls that would start at midnight. Yeah? Uh, it's crazy, her, her packed schedule. And she seemed to be very cheerful and glad about it all. Um, even in London, one of the newspapers can't make sense of this fact that she seems to be smiling all the time. She seems to be enjoying herself. She seems to wear her, her emotions on her sleeve. So when she's happy, you know she's happy. She's waving her fan, and she's really smiling. She waves to the children. She encounters a lot of children along the way and different uh, places and she kind of goes out of her way to pay attention to the children she loves children um, and so she goes out of her way to pay attention to them um, so I learned that she's also very curious and, and she's interested in things like you know firemen and what firemen do yeah, there was one in, in New York, York right? Right. What, what so in New York they put on the, she's investigating fire stations in San Francisco Boston and New York and in New York they put on this fire the firemen put on a display they go up and down the ladders they show her the hose and how they rescue people then she calls them over and she she asked them so what does it take to be a fireman and they said uh, pluck and nerve and she says oh, if I was a man I'd be a fireman <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that's great that tells you something about Queen Kofi Alani right her personality is very adventurous and uh, she's she's gonna do this uh, and she's learning along the way. She seems to be educating herself about these places, enjoying this journey. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and, and for her. And she brought it back. To she brought Hawaii, it back. And Kapilani Hospital. I think the big, the big thing she brought back was that hospital she saw in New York um, on mm. Blackwell Island, today's Roosevelt Island. She saw uh, that hospital, and I think that inspired her to open up the maternity home because that's what the maternity home was uh, when she opened it in 1890. It was so the women could have their babies safely, right? So the babies would mm. live. And so I think that that was her great legacy, and I think it was inspired by this journey and this trip, what she saw in it. Yeah, and it, it, it persists to today. Right. And so we remember. Right. We do. We remember Queen Kapiolani. And let's, let's close out with a, a final photo mm -hmm. of, there we go. Yep. There we That's go. That's a beautiful photo of her. There we yes. go. Queen, <laughs> Queen, yes. Queen thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, mahalo, Queen. Uh, it's very. We appreciate all you've done for us, and right. we will remember you. So, and thank you, Colette. Oh, thank you're you very, very much for my being pleasure. my guest today. Thank you. Aloha. <laughs>